North Carolina ferry system is recognized as the second largest state run ferry system in the country. But due to a history of cost overruns, the ferry system by state code is no longer allowed to go over budget, which ends June 30th. They are now about $2 million short, due in part to rising fuel costs, so trips on the ferry are being slashed. Penny Your Side's Andy Fox shows us the damaging economic impact to isolated Ocracoke Island. The Hatteras Ferry to Ocracoke Island. 8 a.m. We leave behind a parking lot full of cars. Six hours later, not much will change. Ferry Operations Manager Joey McGrath. Sometimes uh, the wait line gets to be two and a half, three hours long. We're running every boat we have right now. The trip to Ocracoke takes about an hour and 10 minutes. A hurricane filled in the quicker 45 minute route. We head out to meet our island guide, Hyde County Commissioner Randall Matthews, who takes us to the Ride the Wind Surf Shop. It's 10 a.m., no customers in the store. That ferry, that's the lifeblood of Ocracoke, and it, right now, we're just getting choked off. Choked off, says business owner Bob Chestnut. Fewer ferry runs mean fewer tourists on the island. Look at this. In 2018, from 10 a.m. to 2.20 p.m., there were 12 ferry departures from Hatteras to Ocracoke. Today, there are only five. And it's not going to improve until that ferry number improves. And for the entire day in 2018, 36 ferry departures. Today, half that at 18. If the first six or seven days of June are, are an indication it's about 45% of our business. Matthews then takes us to the variety store, the only grocery store on the island. Down on aisle four, we found owner Tommy Hutcherson. He blames fewer ferries for less foot traffic. It's impacted a lot of the restaurants and impacted a lot of the smaller stores on the island. We found Trudy Austin, member of the Ocracoke Occupancy Tax Board. The economic impact is going to be devastating, I feel, this year. We are noticing a definite trend into reduction of the money that we uh, take in every year due to the infrequent runs of the ferries. We're not going to pay the state anywhere near the taxes we did last year, I can tell you that. Some good news, Matthews took us to the Ocracoke Express ferry dock. Three trips each day bringing up to 149 people from Hatteras. You can get on the public tram, which is free. You can ride around, you can rent a golf cart right down the street. You, you know, Ocracoke is a walking village. Here's part of the problem. North Carolina has the second largest state ferry system in the country, but only gets 2% of what the entire state highway fund is. And a 2020 study found the ferry system generates $735 million in economic output. And more than half of that comes from the Hatteras Ocracoke Ferry. It's very simple. You simply fund the demand. Local State Senator Bobby Hannock and like-minded legislators have failed to win the debate to allocate more funds to get more ferry runs from Hatteras to Ocracoke. It's absolutely obscene what they've done to the ferry division and what they've done to the folks at Ocracoke. As we pulled into the Hatteras Ferry Dock at 2 p.m., look what we found six hours after we left. They still haven't cleared the parking lot and these folks have been waiting here for at least an hour. Norfolk resident Frank Willis, who owns a home on Ocracoke, knows the issue firsthand. It's because of so much traffic now, you know? I mean, you, you can't get over there. You wait here forever to get over it. And that's why I think a lot of people don't come over here. Mm. I spoke to a hotel operator today who says the long ferry way puts a damper on the start of a vacation. The guests come to him angry. State Senator Hennig told me this story is important to motivate people to call Raleigh to complain. The new budget year begins July 1st. Let's see how much more the ferry system gets in that next budget. I'll keep you posted. I'm Andy Fox, 10 on your side.